thank you for coming into uh, thank you for coming for the peek into my class session July 2021. Uh, we this is uh, our first session for July. We will be having the second session on uh, 26th of July um, later this month. All right. So for today, we have three speakers that are expert in their area of uh, online teacher and learning. So the first one is Associate Professor Dr. Dorothy Dewey. Uh, she's from Faculty of Education and she is uh, the trainer for Emerald Teacher and Learning. Um, her expertise is so wide in education, e-learning, technology. So uh, I think we, we, we will benefit a lot from listening to Dr. Dorothy today. And also um, the other two speakers are Dr. The other two speakers are Dr. Muhammad Nasruddin uh, Naharuddin from Sports Center. And also Dr. Ahmad Yusuf from Academy of Islamic Studies. All right, so they will have their session around 30 to 40 minutes. So if you have any question, just drop it in the chat area, or we can have our Q&A session at the end of all three speakers' session. So Dr. Dorothy, the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you very much, Umu. Okay, hi, hi everybody. Um, Thank you for attending my session. Okay, I noticed some of my friends are here as well. Okay, so uh, I hope it will be a little bit um, informal session in the sense that you can also ask me questions. Okay, put up your hand. If I can see your hand, I, I will answer it. If not, put it in the chat and I will attend to it as soon as I can. Okay, so I am sharing my screen now. I've got actually a PowerPoint pre uh, presentation for you, but just to tell you, I use both Spectrum and <clears throat> a lot of Microsoft Teams. <clears throat> Excuse me, Microsoft Teams. And uh, in my presentation, which I have prepared, because I think it will be faster rather than going into the, the classes itself, my virtual classes. So I got everything on the PowerPoint presentation to make it faster. So I'll be showing you what I do in um, my classes in the Faculty of Education. So I teach uh, a little bit of um, uh, mass, a few master's classes, some PhD. Uh, so basically on research methods as well as uh, I, I did also instructional design. And when I do an undergraduate course, I'll be showing some of the undergraduate course from Computers for Counselors program. So I'll go through in the half an hour how I start my class classes. OK, what activities that I normally do? Sorry. <laughs> OK, uh, the content that I share and how I share it as well as a little bit of the authentic assessment. So this is what I will be covering today. Hmm. Um, how I start my course courses before the MCO before the COVID-19, I have uh, always the same system. I, I must have socialization in the first class. Okay, and that time was blended learning before MCO. So I could see some of the students, maybe the first class, some students didn't come in, but I would walk them through spectrum and show them what I expect from them. Okay, but now with the PKP, uh, it's different. So nowadays, okay, knowing the fact that the students may not see me the whole semester, um, I start the introductions on Spectrum because I believe that Spectrum will be their first point of contact with us, especially from students overseas and in their first semester. So I make sure that I have an, a section on introduction of course, pro forma and uh, course information all must be up there. Lah, huh? Okay. I tell them what I intend to do and what they are supposed to do. So like in this case here, I am your lecturer. I won't be able to see you face to face this semester. Click on this link to uh, meet for our first meeting. So I'll, 
I'll have um, information about what, what to do, right? And I always start with introductions. So introductions, I find that uh, the discussion forum is a nice way of doing introductions and ask them to share something about themselves. Okay, so previously I had done with Padlet as well, okay, because when it was blended, I could tell them and guide them and, and even take photo of them. This was a first year course where that was during before PKP, yeah? so they didn't know each other, so they had so much fun getting to know each other, some of them even asking each other's phone numbers on Padlet. OK, when they had the first time, first chance to meet, meet each other in the in the class. Or in a blended mode, OK, but now um, but now I ask them to introduce mainly on um, on spectrum because access. OK, so this is a first semester master's course. They are just learning how to access and spectrum itself is uh, maybe difficult for some of them. So to make it easy, they introduce themselves on Spectrum first. So this is what I do for my master's class in this particular case, first semester master's class. So I have attendance, as you, you notice, during the PKP attendance is on Spectrum totally. So Spectrum is my main uh, landing page, I, I would say. They have to all start with Spectrum, and I believe when even students from overseas, they see perhaps the uh, learning management system first, Spectrum. Okay, and I give them very detailed, I, I think it's detailed enough, uh, how to access the Google Meet link. I put the link here. So you notice if you can read this, I tell them that this is a recording. Before the first class, I will always start, uh, please access this link for our first class, class pertama, on what date, okay, at what time, by clicking on this particular link. And after the link, uh, after we had that first class, I will put the recording of that first class on, I mean, also I'll change the, the, the words I use. So, kita telah bertemu. We met online and this is the link of the recording. With the understanding that <clears throat> many of them may not know how to access, may have missed the first class and, and you know, may have difficulties. But I, I don't like to use Spectrum so much for our interactions nowadays for basic Landing, landing page like I said, nice spectrum. I will move on to Microsoft Teams. So I tell them clearly from the first class, and I know it's very difficult for most students to, especially the new students, uh, to get onto Microsoft Teams. So I handhold them, but I warn them. So this is the expectation I give them that I will be going on to another platform as well. And uh, so maybe week one two three i still meet them on google meet and we slowly migrate to microsoft teams so sometimes like uh, we start on google meet and i get them onto microsoft teams and then when they're all familiar so so far by the third class onwards normally they are okay for new students and even students who are not so good at technology yeah? so attendance is always online right now wherever, whenever they can, during the class time, they, they lock in their attendance. So I use Google Meet and Microsoft Teams. OK, so this is how I um, arrange the online meeting room for the first day and give them enough support, I hope, OK, that there is support. I also try to get uh, their numbers, phone numbers, and put them in a WhatsApp group so that well, anything then they can um, interact with me that you know they have problems and all that so it's the first timers who have not got any contact that's where i hope i can help them by having information on the online meeting room in spectrum okay so um uh, so so this is what I do. If you have any problems, contact me at my email, okay, and warn them that we're going to Microsoft Teams. So that's expectations. Huh? Okay, 
All right, now I'm going on to what I do in class. So I use a lot of discussion forums. You've already seen how I use for introductions. I ask them to share information. So this is an example that I have given work. They're supposed to describe different types of uh, research. So I sometimes it's with uh, some reading materials and then they share. OK, so when they share, I like to question after that. OK, so after they're sharing, uh, ask them questions which make them compare, maybe like in this case, the different types of research. OK, and try to get new ideas out from them. Discussion forums have a lot of potential. OK, I feel OK, because we can actually when we question them and ask them to think further, it actually makes them think critically. So that's that higher order thinking that we want them to do. So I, I do like discussion forums, OK, especially for like debates or questions that require them to solve a dilemma or something like that. OK, and and also I use discussion forums to um, help them. Now, assignments that I give them, sometimes um, they need to check. They should check with me when it was in the face to face environment. They can always ask me questions about the assignment. But now that it's online, it's difficult sometimes to access. So I give them the opportunity to to share with me what they want to do and I can give a little bit of feedback whether it is suitable or not. So in this case, articles that they are supposed to review, whether it's a suitable article or not, I can, uh, after they've shared with me, I can tell them where, that maybe this is not an empirical research or this research is too simple. You should get something which is of higher quality from a better journal, okay, and things like that. So it helps with feedback. And I use OK, when we migrate off to um, Microsoft Teams, actually I was exploring um, when the first lockdown came, discussion forums on Yammer. OK, this is actually a Microsoft application. Um, I think it's not very popular nowadays. OK, but I we started exploring. I did with some of my classes and ask them to use it for um, maintaining their discussion. So I have students leading their discussion. So they have, for example, a theory that they have to investigate further. OK, so like in this case, I put here on connectivism. They share what they have and they are supposed to maintain the discussions. That means their the class uh, members, they may ask them questions re related to that particular theory and they will have to answer the questions. So student leading the discussions okay, in their own group. So I did try it. Uh, OK, but uh, moving to different platforms was a little bit difficult for most students. OK, so keeping to Microsoft Teams seemed a better idea. OK, so that was some of the things that I learned also as uh, we went into the pandemic. Huh? So discussions, um, I like it because we can have Synchronously, you can chat, okay, and ask me questions, as well as asynchronously. It can be done after class, anytime, maybe when they are reflecting back on the on what was done. So with Microsoft Teams, the discussion is seamless, practically seamless. So we can present, discuss, discussion continues, okay, even after class. And I share a lot of my content and um, notes and lots of things on Microsoft Teams. OK, I started in 2020 yeah, having um, many, many channels. So if you if you have a look here, I had the general channel. I had a channel for their assignment proposal. OK, I had one channel for lectures. OK, uh, one channel for discussions on their assignment, actually, the reflection and uh, the areas that they had to do. So I had many channels at one time, but later I have streamlined this because I feel that perhaps, or maybe it depends on the topic. 
okay, that they can do it in a simpler way. So I later I started to change and made it. But I use a lot of apps, not too many, now, but I use some apps in my discussions on Microsoft Teams. So I like polls or forms for getting a post. Uh, for example, do you need to have a face-to-face -face meeting today? I want to get the question. One way is to count everybody. Another is just to get a poll done and vote on it. Okay, so these are some of the apps that you can add in and there are more apps available in Microsoft Teams. So I have added tabs in my Microsoft Teams. Uh, there are many varieties. Kahoot, I've done it um, as a link and um, OneNote is the one that I, I love it after I've used it. I love it so much. So this is an example of a Microsoft document Word which I have added as a tab for my students to start doing their assignment. So it's something like a notebook or a OneNote, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, later on I started using OneNote as well. Okay, I'll show you how. Okay, so discussions, fantastic on Microsoft Teams because you can use icons, you can use stickers, you can use lots of emojis to show reaction. Okay, uh, so I think our students, adults as well as young younger people love it. <laughs> okay, and um, so this was topics which students led. Okay, they had to lead discussions on the channels. Okay, that was one of the things that I tried as well. And later I streamlined it to general channel and just uh, video presentations of their assignments. OK, so this was a course that I maintained over two years. OK, in the second year I hit the channel so uh, the students can't see it. OK, and I have the that video presentation will be there for every year, I guess. Mm -hmm. So uh, I like this way of doing assignments as well. Now I don't have to sit in class and listen to the assignment. I can just tell the students, OK, record your assignments and we can. Um, so what I've done is everyone can have a look at the assignments, the pre-recorded assignment, OK, and post it on your assignment channel, the video presentation channel for the assignment. And after that, we can have a discussion on it. I can ask questions, so I ask some questions. Of course, I make it in an informal way. Sorry, it took so long to respond. Attractive slides about your handsome face. OK, uh, take into account whether I, I, I know the student. I know this particular student can take it, so it's OK. Right, and I gave comments on, I wanted to comment some things that were not so good about his assignment, so I started with something a bit fun first. OK, so uh, the students, I normally give them an option. You can record in Microsoft Teams or you can record the PowerPoint and export, not just record and record the sound, but export to video. It becomes a video and you can upload in a file. OK, so um, that was one option that I had. Oh, yeah, uh, in the notebook on Microsoft Teams. Mm, so this is some of the things that the students did. Assignment that was on theory instead of just presenting it okay write it in assignment form and with the notebook microsoft um, notebook uh, on teams they can actually do a very beautiful presentation like printing a book so there's options for pages so i'll show you here there's sections that you can add so in this particular case it was one student one section because they've been assigned a theory and they can add their own pages. So it's like a book. They can organize it like profile concepts. So this was done by the students. Once they get the idea, OK, then they, they can actually do very creative work. So these are some things that um, the students did. OK, so with graphics and lots of style. And I also like the notebook because um, in some of my classes, like in this particular class, I can put my notes, OK? So I have notes on different sections here, and I can draw and type my notes. 
uh, if I choose not to use PowerPoint, so I'll try to use a variety of things. Sometimes I use the whiteboard on Microsoft Teams. Sometimes I draw on the note, especially if I want them to keep. Okay, so it's a very important concept. So I draw in and explain to them during our face-to-face -face lectures. So notes has that um, uh, option where you can draw on it. And uh, I like this drawing option also because uh, I use Microsoft notes to ask them to draft out their assignment to tell me. Otherwise, it will be present to me how you're going to do it. What's your idea? So now instead of presenting and telling me, they can draft it out and I can comment. So I've given a space for them to draft out their assignment to see whether they are on, their right, on the right track to give formative feedback. And I can give feedback and I've done feedback. So I, like in this case, marked some things, commented uh, in pencil as well as typing in. So on Microsoft Note, there is that option to draw. So that's where my pen, a bit difficult to, to write with the mouse, okay? But you can choose to type as well and options to change colors, of, of course, okay? So um, I try to give activities that make use of the students' information so that it's more relevant. So like in this particular case, where the learning outcome was to analyze and show data, I've given them links where I collect in Google form information and assign them to to analyze it. OK, so I'm going to show you how I share content. Of course, I meet with Google Meet. I use Microsoft Teams meeting. Eh? OK, but I try to remember that our meetings should not go, should not actually go more than one hour, but most of the time I exceed. It's a three hour class for our uh, faculty. OK, but I try to give them time to do activities rather than listen to, to me. OK, <clears throat> if they listen to their colleagues, their friends, uh, it's OK. But listen to me for two hours. Uh, so I try to intersperse with lots of activities. Hmm? Sometimes I record <clears throat> my lectures and put it in the Microsoft Teams and ask them questions. Sometimes it's on Microsoft Teams, but most of the time, so what I've done is I've used the notebook. So I had that nota where we do to work together. I have a Kerja class also sometimes where I give them um, questions and video links or, or and, okay, these are both at the same time, the video and the PowerPoint slide. So the PowerPoint slide was uh, exported into video format. Huh? OK, and I ask them questions. They answer the questions. So example here. OK, and uh, when they answer in that notebook page, so this is a Kerja class section, I will look through, comment, OK, and, and even maybe in the next class, tell them, you know, what they did wrong or what they did right. OK. Organizing my spectrum pitch before the MCO started. OK, uh, I used to organize sometimes according to the week, 14 weeks. And in this particular course that I did, uh, I organized according to the domains that they, they had to do. They had certain skills and online discussions to do. OK, uh, they, they had to know about the um, uh, security issues for using ICT, problem solving. So I organized it like this on my Spectrum page. Yeah? So I provided resources. You can see some of my activities. I use wikis as well for students to do work and share. I try to also put in interactivity. So sometimes you see me putting in links and especially now when we are um, on this MCO, we want to do asynchronous, more asynchronous actually, so that they don't have to listen to you. So I've used a lot more of um, content curation tools like Nearport. So in this particular case, Nearport, they log in, 
OK, and there is a code to to fill in. So I would have prepared. So in this case, it's on literature review a section where I give them documents to to read. Uh, not much notes, but more documents to read and questions to answer so that they can do it at their own time and their own pace. You don't have to do it all together. So this is something in addition to um, the activities that I put on the notebook. So I've used this uh, as a link. You see in Microsoft um, Microsoft Teams, the link looks like this. OK, and these are some of the documents that I use in the near port. So I supported it in Spectrum and in Microsoft Teams as well. Uh, so old days was just Spectrum alone. Now both, OK? Uh, so I use a lot of PowerPoint slides, OK, which I upload in Spectrum. In the old days, I make sure it's there on Spectrum. OK, you can see these are some of the web pages, links. Mm. So, uh, for example, a web page I use to explore further. For example, this is something I did. OK, I wanted them to uh, go through a certain process, view and, and how to do certain things. So I have step by step. So this is a web page created on Spectrum. OK, so Spectrum has a lot of um, Potential, okay, especially when it comes to presenting information. But Microsoft Teams has a lot of potential for discussion. So this is something that the students did themselves, which I wanted every one of them to, to share. So this was a link that I put on the web page that I created in Spectrum that they could see what their friends did. And in Microsoft Teams, you can also share files. So I will tell them if it's related to generally to the course, it will be in the general channel. So these are the folders, can be students' folders and certain files that I'm having. So notes, you see, I have a file on notes as well, lecture notes and notes. OK, so um, that's how I organize my Microsoft Teams. OK, oh, I have also call in alumni before they started this elite program, huh? depending on the, the course and all that, like in literature review, you know, sometimes each person has their own way of doing literature review. So I would call in sometimes my good students who have already graduated and ask them to present a small section on how they used to do their literature review. And I find that students love talking to alumni because they, they like to find out more and they like to have a kind of connection with them and maybe even refer to them. So I think they are very excited when you have someone else coming into class to share something. And um, I've also done this for before the MCO for work that the students have done. So experts, I've called in experts for evaluation. There's one project that my students need to do in this particular course. They have to develop something. So I have called in uh, different years, different people have been involved, sometimes a lecturer, sometimes a registered counsellor from outside because this might be relating to counselling. And uh, also uh, once there was once I managed to get uh, uh, related to someone doing a project. So I suggested, okay, can my students help develop this for your project? So yes, and they evaluated, they came, okay, the project, the PI, okay, came in to evaluate. And I think one or two out of uh, maybe uh, 10 were, were selected to be used for the project. So this is a form of formative evaluation that you can involve with alumni or other other staff other than those teaching the course. So it makes it more authentic. I'm reaching the end already. So just to share you, share with you that I do authentic, I think it's authentic assessment because I ask students to reflect and record their reflections on a website or on a discussion forum because I feel that especially now, reflections are important for students to think back 
um, especially in a very haphazard way that we are doing when there's online learning, everything going on, they need to reflect and focus their thoughts to think about what they learned in that particular week or two, three weeks once perhaps, so that they can relate it back to their course outcomes, relate it back to their assessment. How are they going to use it and what is useful to be used? So I've done it. I've got my students to do it, uh, especially if content that is more haphazard or has a lot of discussions. OK, so like the one that I shared on connectivism, that was actually a reflection topic. And I also make use of uh, peer assessment, small portion, 5% maybe of a certain assignment to make sure that actually if they are doing group tasks, there is really collaboration and and group work going on. OK, even if they are biased, it doesn't matter. At least there's peer assessment going on. OK, so an alternative assessment method. OK, so oh, I'm going to stop presenting now. OK, and are there any questions? If not, we can leave to the next session. <laughs> I did it in 30 uh, minutes. <laughs> is there any question? For the authority for now? OK, no questions. Right. Uh, okay, so thank you, Dr. Dorothy, Welcome. for the insightful session. So I think we can proceed to the next speaker. Is Dr. Nash here? Hi, hello. Assalamualaikum, everyone. Hi, Dr. Hi. Nash. Are you Hi. ready? Yes, sure. All right, okay. Uh, all yours. Okay, all right. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning to everyone. Uh, First, thank you again uh, to um, Dorothy. Sorry, Dr. Nash. Yeah. Sorry for interrupting. Um, yes. Maybe I a question dari from the comments for Dr. Dorothy. Dr. Dorothy, okay. Uh, yeah, the, sorry, from sorry. How many hours do you spend for preparing? <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, I just saw that. It's okay. It just came out right. Huh? Uh, no, Haslina. Um, how many hours I spend preparing? Okay, in the beginning, if it's a new course, I will spend more time. Maybe uh, sometimes if it's totally new, three hours. Lah. <laughs> three hours before the lecture. But once I have already started, um, you know, it's always the beginning that is difficult. After that, uh, then it takes up less time. One hour maybe per, per course. Mm. It's the setting up first that is always difficult. Hope that answers your question. Eh? Okay, and I thought I saw a hand come up just now. Was there someone who wanted to ask a question? I think it's Dr. Kiranjit. Uh, Dr. Kiranjit? Alright, uh, maybe we can take the question later after Dr. Nash's session. Mm, yes. Okay. All right, okay. okay. Good luck, Dr. Nash. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dorothy. Thank you so much for your session. Um, all right. Uh, okay. As for today, okay. First of all, I would like to thank uh, EDEC for inviting me to this uh, morning session where I'm going to share with you, um, you know, um, things that I did during my class. Uh, throughout this semester actually. I'm just, you know, thinking to start it this semester. I didn't do it. I didn't do it in the previous semester, in, in the first semester uh, in the first semester. But I think uh, you know uh, when the pandemic hit uh, our country and we are forced to do online teaching and learning. Um, let me share my screen I guess. I, I think it's good if I can share my screen first. Can you guys see my screen? For the moment, can you see my screen? I yes, think it's yes. Right? Okay, okay, thank you. So, yeah, 
when, when, when the university asked all lecturers to do online teaching and learning, which was, I think, uh, previous two semester, right? Uh, if I if I got uh, myself correct, and uh, you know, um, I'm quite struggling since I'm a new lecturer. I was appointed as senior lecturer early last year, 2020, and you know, my first experience that I have to you know to face was this challenge. You know, I have to do online teaching and learning during my first you know appointment as the senior lecturer. So it's quite quite tough to, for me to adapt. I used to do teaching and learning, but physically before. But you know, suddenly you have to change everything, uh, you know, to online. It's quite challenging to me. And thanks to EdEx, because you know, <laughs> uh, we we were asked to attend an Emirate session. Okay, and I, I completed that session. And uh, one of the session taught me about uh, how to optimally utilize Spectrum. And one of it, uh, it contains the H5P. I'm not sure whether you guys have heard H5P in the spectrum, uh, but you know, uh, I decided when I asked my, my colleague, uh, my colleague, uh, mostly seniors, they, they haven't heard his H5P. They know spectrum, but they haven't heard H5P. So, you know, when I learned this, uh, I, I think it's quite useful especially during the online teaching and learning during the pandemic. And uh, yeah, back to the first semester that I first teach online, I didn't, you, I did, I have no clue how to conduct my, my lecture. It was very boring. I still remember it was dull, just me speaking through the, you know, through the laptop and there's no interaction between me and my students. Uh, and I, I received quite, you know, quite, uh, I would say, um, poor feedback uh, from, from my students because there's no interaction uh, there's no interactivity uh, it's quite dull you know as if I just talk before my laptop so um, and uh, in my next semester on the subsequent semester I decided you know that I, I must do something okay um, and I found out h5p which available in the spectrum uh, I think it's going to help me a lot lah, during that time. I think this is going to help. And as I, I, you know, I get my uh, one of my, my colleagues to, to teach me how to use it. And I recall back all the, you know, uh, the the session that I attended during the Emerald. And I, uh, you know, try to master it. Although it's not all, I must, you know, I must, uh, I must confess that, uh, you know, uh, H5P will provide you a massive interactivity that you can utilize during teaching and learning. And I only master, I'm, I won't say master, lah, you know, I only covered like 20% of it, out of it. And I apply this just 20% in my, uh, you know, this recent semester. And I surprisingly, I received quite good feedback from students, it improved my teaching and learning. And the interactivity also, also improved. Lah. Uh, and um, I do did collect some data as well, which uh, I'm going to present it in the uh, Light Tech conference, which is going to be uh, in August, right? Uh, yeah, I'm going to present my finding as well. The difference between, you know, synchronous and asynchronous using H5P and how the perception of student for this both type of teaching and online teaching and learning. So that's I'm going to share with you guys. Uh, it's kind of a, you know, sneak peek a bit of my data that I collected uh, uh, for last semester um, using H5P. Uh, I'm going to share with you guys and also uh, to, to avoid you know, boredom, I'm also going to do some demonstration in this, in, in this particular, you know, sharing session that, that I did uh, for, my, for my class. I'm going to share with you. I'm going to demonstrate how to use H5P. Okay, some of the you know uh, uh, you know uh, some of the uh, function that you, you you can find in the H5P. So online teaching and learning, uh, you know, when we forced. Okay, not false. Like, I mean, it's it's always a you know option as well, and it's good if you can add this as a skill. 
there's a few I would say method of online teaching and learning that also you know, uh, Dr. Dorothy has explained in his uh, sharing session. Uh, it can be divided into few classification, asynchronous, meaning that real time, asynchronous, meaning that you record yourself and then upload it later for your uh, students to watch uh, later in, effect in, their, in their flexible time. And also, you can do combination between synchronous and asynchronous. Okay, you can combine these two. But, uh, and then, um, issue with online teaching learning that I believe every one of us, uh, you know, educator uh, experience or face is, you know, the student satisfaction. Are they satisfied enough, satisfied enough with, the, with the session, with, with what we have delivered to them? Are they satisfied enough? And then, uh, effectiveness. Okay, is it effective? And then quality, is it up to the expectation? And then uh, what is the level of engagement during teaching and learning, uh, online teaching and learning? So what is H5P? Okay, for those who didn't know, I, I presume, you know, majority of uh, our lecture in UM, okay, they do know uh, Spectrum, the existence of Spectrum. In fact, they need to use uh, Spectrum as their medium or platform uh, of online teaching and learning during this pandemic, right? But do you guys know that there's the H5P in the spectrum? I, 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 can, I can vouch, you know, majority of you did not know this, okay? Hence, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share with you how to use this. So, uh, and thing is, the thing is, okay, it is, it is also available, it is also available for non-UM, um, you know, lecture. You can, it is free. It, you can, you can use it, although you don't have Spectrum. It's available. Uh, it's free of charge. Okay, where you can find. Uh, you know, we can use it uh, through this link that I have attached in here. Okay, this is for you non UM, UM stuff. But for us, uh, I think it's good if you can use it in our Spectrum, where we can find it in in the uh, activity uh, or resources part. I'm going to show you. Okay, I'm going to show you later after this slide. Okay. So, uh, okay. So these are the you know um, interactivity uh, tool that you can find in the H5P. You can do interactive slide. You know, it's kind of a like uh, PowerPoint slide, but you can make it interactive, meaning that they can do some games, uh, quizzes, um, um, link that they can direct them to other videos, for example. You can add video as well in the slides. And then there is the quizzes. Uh, and you can embed quizzes in the slides. Uh, you know, drag and drop. And there's many more. I'm just going to show it to you. Now I'm going to do the demonstration. Uh, I'm going to use the, um, how to say, uh, the, the free version from the, from the link that I gave you just now. Uh, let me open my, okay, where's this line? Okay, so yeah, go to this link. So it will directly head you to the, yeah, to here. Okay, and you have to uh, subscribe. You have to create your own account, which I've already did mine last three hours ago, actually. <laughs> you know, we don't have to, you know, we don't have to uh, subscribe for this uh, H5P because we are, we, we can, we can, we can use this in our, our spectrum. But, you know, for those who are joined, not UM staff, um, you know, you can use it here. You can, uh, you can go to the, you can go to the, um, page h5p page and i create your account and this is my account that i created three hours ago okay for example okay uh, this is my home page so this is my account if you want to create i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, demonstrate you a few uh, uh, tools that you can use okay first i'm gonna, gonna teach you uh, by using this uh, from, from this uh, open source, open uh, open page. Okay. 
and then um, is it give you all? Okay, and then uh, this is what I did this morning. I'm going to demonstrate you the new one, the new content. And uh, yeah, there's a pop up here and you can uh, choose any option in the drop down list. Okay, for example, I, I didn't master all. I'm just, I, I, you know, I just use a few of these options here. Course presentation. Oh, for example, let, let's do the course presentation. So detail. So the detail and use, click use. So this is how it looks like. Okay, if you're not sure how to use it, how to, uh, how, how to, you know, um, to kickstart to do your slides using the H5P because you, you are so used to PowerPoint, for example, you can always uh, watch the tutorial. And also um, they provide you an example as well. Okay. This other tutorial that you can you can um, read and watch. Okay, this is how it look like. Okay, this is how the H5P for um, interactive slide looks like. Okay, so you can put your pictures like PowerPoint, and then um, um, and at the end of the lecture slide you can do some, you know, uh, like reflection of the particular topic that you presented. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to demonstrate to you now. So for example, if you want to add slide, you can to add, add text, you can just simply, for example, I'm going to just type like my topic is diabetes, diabetes, diabetes. Diabetes, and then uh, you can change the font like Microsoft Office, change the color. Let's use this one and then yeah, make it a bit larger, perhaps. And oh no, not this one. This is highlight. This one. Okay, I should. So this. Okay, yeah. And change this to black. Change this to black. I'm still rookie, guys. I have to be honest here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still rookie. Yeah. I'm, I'm novice. Okay, I'm still trying my best to get use of this you know, for my students, of course. And uh, I think all of us need to, you know, learn this as well to make your uh, online teaching and learning more interactive. So yeah, okay, let's say uh, if you have a, you know, okay, definition to, okay. definition of diabetes. So you take this from your, you know, notes or textbook, where was it? Um, okay, here, so yeah, paste in here. Oh, these are the problem that you might face because you know sometimes it, it's happened like this. I don't know how to maybe present. Uh, seems like you have to type it yourself. Sometimes this happens. The you know the hiccup with the system. Never mind. Okay, diabetes. Okay, let's say I just put anything. How to get this? Okay. Okay. Right. So diabetes. Some definition. The uh, diabetes is the tolerance of Insulin, for example, in absorbing. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud. This is not a real definition, but just bear in mind. Absorbing a glucose, glucose, glucose and muscle. Okay, something. Like that. Okay, okay. 
again, then play press. Yeah. So you can also put picture. This is for you to put picture. OK. Um, yeah. For example, if you want to put, if you want to include pictures of what? Um, uh, digestive system, for example, digestive system. Okay, these are some pictures of the digestive system. And then uh, take that. And save as. Okay. Need to save this in the format of picture. You have to save it in the format of uh, G, G, JPEG. Or else it, did, it will not recognize. Save image as, yeah. You have to save image as, yes, JPEG. And then uh, let's put in the desktop. It's here. Okay. Add. Yeah, there's a picture there. Again, open. So, yeah. And then press done. So, you can bring this front or back. Okay, you can do that. Okay, so to you. This is depend on your creativity. Again, preparing your slides, and then um, if you want to add slide, just press here, so it will lead to the next slide. And let's say if you want to embed a video, you put a video in it, press uh, this video here, and um, yeah, press this plus button to add video. Okay, and it direct you to this uh, link, paste YouTube link or other video sources okay let's say uh, sorry okay maybe there are two, mate. yeah this is the diabetes video that i um, already prepared earlier okay copy this link and then just simply paste in the in the h5p um, interactive slide and then insert Okay, um, yeah, I think it's if everything all right. I think just press done there. So yeah, so you you can embed the video here, okay, in your lecture slide. And then uh, let's say at the end of your presentation, you want to do some course reflection, like your reflection. You can always do, you can always uh, put, you know, um, like quizzes. There's a fill in the blank, multiple choice question, true or false. Let's say, yeah, let's let's do multiple choice question. Okay. Um, yeah. Title, um, reflection. Then, which are these? Are, which are these? Which um from this list is not type of diabetes okay for example then uh, and then you you can um you know provide your um multiple choice answer in this in here okay So not, so make sure you, you know, if I, I will just highlight the word not, so, you know, people wouldn't misread it. And then, um, what else? And then the next option, add more option. Yeah, just just put like sample diabetes type or oh, I don't know. Yeah, just yeah, you just you know. So this is the answer. This is not type of diabetes, right? So yeah, range of range of uh, score you should put one hundred, meaning that okay, if you if you answer correct, you will get full mark. 
If you don't answer, you will, so you, it's either yes or no. Okay, one or none. Okay, so we just put one hundred. It's no you can you can make in between. It's up to you. Depends on your creativity. And you press done. So there it is. So you can do video. Uh, you can do quizzes uh, after the slide. Okay, save. Okay, you have to put title here. Diabetes. So this is a few example. Okay, save. Is there anything else that it means? I hope no. Yeah, there you go. So this is the slide. You can, you know, copy the link and then paste in whenever, wherever you want to paste the link to. Okay, you can, uh, you can paste it in your WhatsApp. Uh, you know, send an email to your students. Um, yeah. So the video is here, right? This is the video. Okay, cool. And then uh, this is the, qu the the quiz. So answer is here. Feedback. Yeah. So total score hundred percent, one over one. So yeah. So that's that. Try to play around with this uh, interactive a uh, slide and if you are um staff academic staff of course you can you know straight away use the h5p from spectrum which i'm gonna demonstrate another function that uh h5p can do okay i'm gonna close this now okay you can play around they're basically the same but you know they just you know make it available in the spectrum so this is your spectrum. Uh, this is an example of my, you know, the course that I that teach last, I mean, this semester. Uh, can you see it? Quite a number of uh, H5P, you know, quite a number of H5P uh, videos and also um, uh, quizzes, okay? All right, um, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna demonstrate another one since I have another light five minutes I guess yeah, so what you can do uh, where, where, where you, you can find where you can find uh, h5p is uh, you know go to any of your course file course uh, in, in the spectrum and then go to add activity or resource here and then there is a h5p in here and you drop down list up for that and then press add okay Okay, so the same thing, you can you can opt anything from here. Okay, you can do arithmetic quick which are ar ar arithmetic quiz, which I'm not really used to. Okay, um, drag and drop. Okay, I'm gonna give you example how to do drag and drop. Okay. Okay, drag and drop. Uh, do I have time? I don't really have much time. It's okay. Uh, you can you can you can watch the the um where is the okay. Let's say use opt for use. When you press use, you can um, press the tutorial, an example, okay, to to understand better how to use this option. Okay, H5P option. Yeah, and then these are the example that I did. Okay, uh, let's go get back to my. Introduction. This is what I did. Okay, this morning. Okay, this is the drag and drop option. Okay. All right. So, so you can divide into two part: upper um, gastrointestinal tract and then lower uh, gastrointestinal tract. So I'm gonna just randomly put. Okay, this option here in this okay uh, if, if you if you can see there's a two boxes here okay that you can is, 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 that you must drop your options to this um, uh, area if you let's say you you uh, you place the option not within these two boxes it will go back to the original place okay make sure you put it precisely in these two boxes and then let's see 
can just you know yeah okay right so so the student can check okay which one is the correct answer so it, they also can always re, retry back okay we try their activity okay your activity and then uh yeah that's that so that's the drop uh drag and drop option and uh, i also combine both synchronous and asynchronous you can you can use this as your combination of uh, both synchronous and, and asynchronous uh, way of teaching and learning by using uh, the h5p and this is what i did last time okay this master lung disease and its function uh, where i actually film myself first okay i film myself first okay and upload the video upload the video in um, youtube and paste the link okay paste the link through one of the option in h5p and then uh, if you notice here there's a dot uh, circle here that's actually indicate the interactivity okay i'm going to show you okay right, hang on back uh, okay okay this is compulsory because i said it for them to to un must answer this so you have to answer this before you can move the the video play the video so what is the main purpose of uh, blah blah blah, blah? Uh, oxygen consumption need to be improved because it will help to assist ventilation okay all right so the answer is here so the um you know the video won't play until the student answer it correctly so i i opt for that i i, I designed it to be like this so that's why I need to okay and also not just quizzes that you can embed between uh you know we, sorry within the video within your lecture but also you can but you can also, um, you know, uh, put link. Okay. So, so that's the link. So, so uh, yeah, I might miss something during my presentation, my live presentation. So I add uh is something in here okay the uh, link explanation additional explanation in here and this is the link. okay other yes So beside patient can also breath a breathing exercise, uh, can also do breathing exercise to strengthen their respiratory muscles. So this this is actually the link. How can a patient explaining how patient can um, do a breathing exercise? It will lead to another video. Okay, another video. So this is you know breathing. Okay, this is another video breathing exercise. Okay, so that's that. So this is what I did in my, my classroom. Okay. So yeah. And what good thing about this as well, you can do copyright. Okay, you can arrange for copyright. You can you can claim your copyright of your materials in here. Okay, you can propose it to UM. Uh, I think you and that can arrange uh this for you i guess uh yeah maybe Kwanumu can respond this later i'm not quite sure but what what i why what i been mentioned you can use this as your copyright and your copyright is actually will fulfill one of your kpi uh, of this interactivity okay all the interactivity that you has co have come up with you can you can ask for that okay uh, yeah i'll give you some example of copyright uh, let's say, um, yeah, let's say I opt for the same thing as well. Okay, H5P. Okay. 
okay interactive is there an interactive video where's the interactive video yeah interactive video you can say press use okay yeah just put random uh movies example yeah random title i'm just going to show to you okay at video paste insert okay edit copyright so you can you can put copyright in here so blah blah blah, blah. copyright okay and you can gather all the copyright all the materials that you you prepare and um with copyright uh you can okay you can gather them and then um request for copyright uh, for yourself okay all right so yeah that's the demonstration so i'll go back to my slide okay so yeah this is the finding that i uh get okay i distribute some questionnaire to my student last uh, i mean this semester uh to see their satisfaction level quality of teaching and learning and efficiency of teaching and learning and also student engagement there are from tr uh, from to this is co actually collaboration uh, you know kind of a you know study actually um i did in cscs and also i asked my friend my my you know my partner this research partner in uh, faculty of science and these are the findings uh, we managed to collect 200 uh, respondents comparing between synchronous okay synchronous means you teach online like you you know talking to the to the computer talking to before your, your your laptop or device and then compare it to the h5p okay asynchronous but interactive okay asynchronous means you pre-record it it can be you know an interactive slide that i um uh, explained to you just now and uh, these are the results interestingly the orange color seems um higher okay it shows higher uh, percentage compare this is more from most prominent one quality of teaching and learning okay higher compared to um, conventional online teaching and learning where you just talk before your uh, device okay you can see this is significant really significant actually okay quality of teaching and learning they like although it's asynchronous meaning that you just upload that into your spectrum and they have a flexible time to watch and do the the quizzes all the quizzes and that's it okay okay they like it more compared to you know you talking to the computer <laughs> okay so these are some of the feedbacks from the student the embedded tutorial questions really helped me to stay focused in lecture maybe we can have more tutorial questions included this is a student from faculty of science questions makes me more focused on slides uh, also students from faculty of science and uh, this online learning methods interesting because I can replay back and rewind. This is interesting, guys. Uh, back and rewind uh, the video if I still not clear about it. I also can watch the video anytime I want when I free and study when I have flexible time. Uh, so there's an element of flexibility here. I also can participate of, uh, for answering question part after understand the content. If the question is not clear or I can't uh, or I can't find the answer, I just play back and rewatch this student from uh, Center of Sports and Science Science. Okay, yeah. So this is uh, some suggestion that I can you know, you know provide uh, give to you guys. So I would encourage for you to you know experiment with this. Okay, and uh, try to use H5P in your future teaching and learning because I'm pretty sure that you know next. Next semester will be still online teaching and learning. And uh, yeah, you can use this and uh, combine, you can, can consider to combine it as well. And asynchronous teaching and learning with H5P can be used to allow flexibility for both lecture and students. You, you know, you can, you can, as I mentioned, you can upload this, this in your embed in, in your spectrum, and then you can do something else. You can do your writing, you can do your other meeting, go to for other meeting. And then you can also uh, seek for, I mean, uh, do your copyright, uh, as I mentioned just now. Uh, and it is also part of uh, your KPI. And for that, thank you so much. Uh, so this is end of for my sharing today, what I did for my uh, last, I mean, uh, the, um, for this semester. Thank you so much. Back to you, uh, 
Palumu. Thank you, Tanesh. Uh, if there's a question or two from the audience, maybe you can unmute your mic or just post in the chat area. We'll give it about 10 seconds. Uh, right, Dr. Nash, uh, there's a question from Dr. Tang uh, Sui okay. Song in the chat area. Are you able to read it? Yes, yes. So, yeah, thanks, Dr. Nash, for sharing this. Didn't know about H uh, H5P. Good to know. Looks like H5P has the function similar to add puzzle where we can add uh, interaction question into a video. Am I? Yes, yes, you're correct. Uh, I'm not very uh, familiar with uh, Add Puzzle, but you know, uh, hang on, uh, let me read. Uh, finish your your question first. Does it has the function for us to trace if students watch it or watch it or not? Like uh, Add Puzzle, um, if you include interactivity, uh, if you if you uh, do the interactivity, it's like kind of a quiz. Yes, you can you can trace. Uh, uh, whether your students have watched it or not. Uh, but if let's say they did not participate in the interact interactivity uh, function in the H5P, I don't think. But you all, uh, you will always can, you know, uh, set the interactivity compulsory for them to answer, for them to, you know, consider attend the class. You can do that in H5P as well. Yeah. I hope that answers your question, uh, Dr. Tang. All right, thank you, Dr. Nash. Um, maybe we can invite you again for uh, to, to explore in depth of the yeah. five P. Uh, yes, yes. I think half an hour is not sufficient. I think I hope I I provide adequate amount of you know uh information to everyone about H five P. I think we got some of them interested already. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank I'm you, Dr. Nash. Uh, I'm still learning, though, uh, Panumu. I'm still learning. I'm, I'm not right, that right. pro we, yet. We all are. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, we see you at the end of the session uh, in Q&A. Sure. All right. Okay. Um, is Dr. Ahmed ready? Yeah. Okay. Um, now we'll welcome Dr. Ahmed bin Yusuf from Academy of Islamic Studies. Dr. Ahmed, silakan. Baik, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera. Terima kasih uh, uh, Puan Umu Saadah. Um, seterusnya, uh, para pensyarah dari uh, Universiti Malaya, mungkin daripada luar Universiti Malaya juga. Um, jadi, insyaAllah pada sesi ini saya akan cuba untuk berkongsi uh, bersama tuan-tuan dan puan-puan sekalian uh, berkaitan dengan uh, pengajaran ya secara dalam talian yang uh, telah uh, saya laksanakan ya uh, bermula ataupun uh, ketika berlakunya uh, pandemik COVID-19 ini sehingga pertemuan secara fizikal uh, secara dalam kelas tak dapat dilaksanakan ya uh, jadi uh, baik Um, cuma bila mana uh, saya merupakan orang ketiga <laughs> dan juga uh, perasaannya sesi uh, peak into my class ini adalah yang mungkin kelima rasanya ya kalau tak silap atau mungkin lebih uh, saya tak pasti jadi uh, mungkin akan berlaku banyak pengulangan lah ya uh, jadi kalau kita bersara uh, di Universiti Malaya ni nak uh, bercerita berkaitan dengan uh, penggunaan spektrum rata-rata mungkin akan berlaku pengulangan ya uh, begitu juga nak berkongsi uh, tentang penggunaan uh, aplikasi yang lain Google Meet atau Microsoft Teams dan sebagainya mungkin berlaku pengulangan juga jadi saya agak uh, sukar juga untuk uh, memilih cara pembentangan tapi walaupun uh, mungkin berlaku sedikit pengulang, uh, pengulangan dan uh, Uh, mungkin di akhir uh, saya akan cuba menunjukkan perkara yang mungkin tak akan tak berulang lagi lah sebelum ini, ya, yeah? iaitulah uh, kami ataupun saya sendiri telah bangunkan satu aplikasi berasaskan web 
untuk uh, digunakan ya uh, untuk menyelesaikan masalah kami lah di program pendidikan Islam yang menawarkan uh, kursus ya yang memerlukan kepada amali ya uh, baik jadi ya uh, Baik. Bila mana berlaku uh, musim pandemik yang menyebabkan kita tak boleh nak uh, datang ke kampus dan juga uh, melakukan uh, kuliah ataupun uh, tutorial secara fizikal uh, bersemuka. Jadi uh, saya akan teringat dengan uh, seorang yang tokoh lah ya di Universiti Malaya ini iaitu bekas uh, timbalan Nap Chancellor kita Datuk Profesor Dr. Awang Bulgi Bawang Mahmud ya yang mana saya pernah uh, berada sekali dalam satu mesyuarat dengan beliau ketika sekitar tahun 2016 atau 2017 kalau tak silap ya yang mana pada ketika itu ada berlaku masalah uh, uh, apa ya uh, saya terlupa masalah uh, jelebu eh yang menyebabkan uh, tak apa uh, pekerja ataupun uh, staff pensyarah Universiti Malaya tak boleh nak pergi ke kelas begitu juga pelajar-pelajar. Uh, Jadi uh, Datuk uh, Prof Dr Awang Bulgiba telah uh, uh, meminta mengarahkan edek untuk mengukur kesiapsiagaan Universiti Malaya lah, untuk menghadapi keadaan bencana alam yang menyebabkan pelajar tidak dapat datang ke kampus seperti biasa tanpa mencacatkan proses pengajaran dan pembelajaran. Jadi uh, bertitik tolak dari situlah uh, minggu e pembelajaran uh, diperkenalkan iaitulah uh, pada minggu tersebut para pesyarah tak dibenarkan untuk bertemu dengan pelajar secara um, uh, bersemuka dalam uh, bilik kuliah ataupun dalam kelas tetapi uh, perlu melaksanakan uh, pengajaran dan pembelajaran secara dalam talian dan jarak jauh sepenuhnya ya yeah. dan di situlah kita nampak bahawa uh, nampaknya <laughs> pada ketika itulah ya yeah. Uh, Universiti Melayu dari segi perasaan itu mungkin agak sedikit masalah terutamanya bila mana kita terlalu uh, bergantung kepada sistem pengurusan pembelajaran kita iaitu LMS kita iaitulah uh, spektrum yang berasaskan muda uh, untuk melaksanakan segala perkara ini ya. Uh, jadi, uh, di, jadi tapi bagi saya uh, pertama uh, uh, minggu e pembelajaran itu uh, telah memberikan satu uh, inspirasi lah ya kepada ramai pencarah uh, untuk uh, mempelajari lagi kaedah-kaedah yang boleh digunakan ya untuk uh, mengajar secara jarak jauh dan dalam talian ya dan begitu juga dengan minggu e-pembelajaran tersebut kita nampak memang uh, sistem uh, prasarana uh, berkaitan dengan e-pembelajaran di Universiti Malaya pada ketika itu masih uh, bermasalah lah saya rasa tuan-tuan dan perempuan pun dapat rasakan ya bila masuk je pagi waktu PTJ ataupun fakulti atau akademi tertentu melaksanakan ya minggu pembelajaran pada minggu tersebut maka memang tak boleh masuk sana tak boleh masuk sini nak log, nak login menggunakan apa uh, CAS itu pun tak boleh ya jadi uh, itulah yang yang berlaku jadi saya tak akan lupa uh, Datuk Prof Awang Bulgiba Uh, bila mana berlakunya apa yang berlaku sekarang lah iaitulah uh, terpaksa uh, melaksanakan pengajaran-pengajaran secara dalam kan sepenuhnya terpaksa baik uh, bagi saya uh, sebelum, uh, sebelum saya teruskan lah ya ini mungkin perkara-perkara yang dah diketahui cuma saya cuba nak ber berkongsi apa yang pandangan saya berkaitan dengan perkara ini ya dalam kita melaksanakan pengajaran-pengajaran secara dalam talian uh, bagi saya uh, yang paling perkara yang perlu diambil perhatian ada dua perkara yang bagi saya penting yang pertama adalah perbezaan individu yang kedua adalah tabiat dan keperluan kursus yang diajar ya yeah. kalau kita tengok uh, macam ni kan dekat gambar ni uh, yang ini kan dia ada keperluan khas kan yang ini tak tahu apakah masalah dia ya yeah. yang ini pun mungkin ada cara dia dan masing-masing uh, begitu juga pelajar-pelajar kita ya yeah. ada yang mungkin uh, cepat uh, bosan sekiranya ya yeah belajar depan komputer ya dan macam-macam lagi lah ada yang mungkin masalah dari segi talian ya internet ya untuk belajar secara uh, segera sepenuhnya ya dan macam-macam lagi masalah dan uh, itu perlu kita ambil kira dalam kita memilih kaedah memilih aplikasi yang kita nak gunakan ya 
uh, ketika melaksanakan pengajaran dan pembelajaran secara dalam talian dan jarak jauh ya. Baik. Uh, kalau kita tengok ya. Uh, jadi apa yang perlu kita sebagai seorang pesarah buat ya bila mana uh, kita nak melaksanakan pengajaran secara uh, dalam talian ataupun jarak jauh uh, dengan mengambil kira meraihkan perbezaan individu. Bahkan sebenarnya bagi saya perbezaan individu ni juga me- berkait kepada pesarah kan. Pesarah pun ada uh, masalah-masalah tiga perkara ni. Contoh pengetahuan dan kemahiran ya. Uh, di sini. Uh, ya, pengetahuan dan kemahiran ni uh, pelajar ada masalah kadang-kadang sebahagiannya lah dan pecarah juga ada masalah ya. ramai juga pecarah lah yang masih uh, se- saya rasa lah uh, saya rasa ramai juga pecarah yang uh, masih tertanya bagaimanakah menggunakan uh, kuis katakan dalam spektrum ya. dan macam-macam lagi bagaimana kita mengendalikan uh, menggunakan Google Meet ataupun uh, Microsoft Team dan sebagainya uh, begitu ada pecarah ya jadi uh, itu uh, antara perbezaan lah yang berlaku dari aspek itu. Kemudian uh, dari segi uh, prasarana lah peranti dan sampai internet. Jadi ini perkara yang perlu kita ambil perhatian juga. Yang ketiga uh, keselesaan tempat belajar ataupun tempat mengajar. Ya. Kalau pecarah mengajar lah. Kalau uh, pelajar tempat belajar. Ya. Jadi bagi saya uh, tiga perkara ini penting untuk kita ambil perhatian. Ya, uh, untuk kita uh, dapat ya, melaksanakan pengajaran dan pembelajaran secara dalam internet ini dengan Uh, lebih berkesan dan lebih baiklah untuk kedua-dua pihak uh, pesarah dan juga pelajar. Baik. Jadi uh, perkara yang saya buat dan saya rasa saya cadangkan untuk bercara buat adalah kita menganalisis perbezaan pelajar. Ya. Yeah? Uh, kita mungkin uh, boleh bertanya kan ya. Yeah? Uh, 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 bagaimana kamu ya yeah? uh, men- uh, mendapat capaian internet. Ya. Yeah? Uh, contoh. Uh, bagaimana kamu Uh, dapat capaian internet. Uh, jadi uh, bila kita bertanya uh, pelajar mungkin oh jadi kita tahu bahawa rata-rata pelajar masuk internet menggunakan telefon pintar contohnya ketika kita laksanakan pengajaran menggunakan Microsoft Teams contohnya. Jadi kita dapat tahu bila mana pelajar menggunakan uh, telefon pintar sahaja bukan komputer. Uh, jadi kita nampak maknanya skrin agak kecil. Jadi kita sebagai pesarah boleh bersedia untuk uh, bahan-bahan pengajaran tu uh, pastikan ia di besarkan ataupun di zoom contohnya ataupun sekiranya kita uh, menyediakan ya, bahan-bahan seperti uh, slide uh, powerpoint dan sebagainya kita kena pastikan teks ya, yang kita sediakan itu besar ya. ha, kalau tidak pelajar susah dia, kena, dia pula kena zoom uh, menggunakan telefon pintar dalam keadaan telefon pintar itu memang skrinnya agak uh, bukan agak memang kecil ya. Ha. Ya, jadi uh, itu yang pertama bertanya dan uh, kita juga uh, bertanya mungkin secara kualitatif lah kan. Kita tak tahu berapa peratus dan sebagainya ya. Tapi uh, 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 saya juga biasa menggunakan choice yang ada dalam uh, spectrum ataupun poly ya yang ada dalam uh, Microsoft uh, Teams uh, untuk bertanya uh, macam-macam lah kepada pelajar uh, uh, tentang uh, perbincangan lah untuk kita meraihkan perbezaan-perbezaan tersebut ya. Uh, ada contoh tak? Um, baik ini contoh yang saya buatlah. Ya. Ha, saya tanya untuk tukar uh, apa? Uh, tarikh kuis nilai dalam pendidikan Al-Quran. Ha, jadi saya gunakan uh, ini atau poly ya dalam Google uh, dalam Microsoft Teams. Uh, ia merupakan aplikasi uh, terpati lah ya pihak ketiga uh, dalam Microsoft Teams yang boleh kita gunakan ya. Jadi uh, menarik uh, menariknya poly ni adalah Uh, kalau uh, biasanya kita uh, uh, boleh uh, uh, apa dia punya pilihan tu uh, mungkin tetap saja kan kalau kita guna apa biasanya dalam Google, uh, Google Form atau Microsoft Form tu tapi kalau guna poli ni pelajar boleh tambah ini yang ni pelajar tambah ni ya yeah? a uh, contohlah kan ya yeah? a uh, jadi a uh, bila mana kita uh, bertanya secara uh, sebegini rupa ya yeah? kita dapat uh, memastikan uh, manakah yang Uh, uh, pelajar suka ya yeah. uh, sebab akhirnya kita punya proses pengajaran dan pembelajaran adalah untuk kebaikan pelajar ya yeah. uh, untuk kita sampai kepada objektif pengajaran ya yeah. CLO objektif pembelajaran ya yeah. uh, khusus ya yeah. jadi uh, kita nak pastikan pelajar selesa ya yeah. uh, untuk uh, belajar dan bila mana dia selesa dia mampu untuk belajar dengan baik dan boleh mencapai kita punya ataupun khusus punya uh, uh, objektif lah 
uh, kemudian meraihkan kemampuan pelajar ya yeah? meraihkan kemampuan pelajar uh, pelajar ada macam-macam jenis macam saya sebut tadi ada yang cepat uh, apa uh, bosan ada yang macam-macam lah ya yeah? ada yang aktif hyperaktif dan sebagainya jadi Uh, kita kena raikan semuanya. Jadi uh, cara uh, saya mengatasi perkara inilah uh, seperti mana yang saya, uh, saya sebut dekat bawah sekali itulah ya. Uh, jadi uh, uh, contohlah contoh ya. Uh, kemampuan uh, pelajar antaranya adalah dia ketika dia mendengar ya uh, kita punya kuliah secara uh, segera, synchronous. Um, biasanya ketika dia mendengar tu dia tak boleh nak faham. Ya. Uh, jadi bagi saya Pembelajaran dan pengajaran yang uh, dirakam kalau kita menggunakan Google uh, Meet contohnya ataupun uh, Microsoft Team contohnya ya, uh, ia adalah lebih bermanfaat. Ya, uh, kalau tuan-tuan dan puan-puan pernah tengok ya, uh, uh, Khan Academy dia ada buat satu uh, berkaitan uh, dengan perkara inilah tentang video ya. Uh, dia kata uh, dia biasa tolong dia punya uh, apa uh, saudara dia lah. Ya, yeah. uh, sepupu dia. Ya, yeah. jadi sepupu dia bagi tahu uh, bila mana dia tolong buatkan video uh, tentang kalkulus, lah tak silap lah, atau pesan lah, atau matematik. Uh, dia punya sepupu lebih suka tengok video daripada uh, Khan uh, tu mengajar secara uh, apa uh, bersemuka. Ya, yeah. sebab apa? Sebab bila mana menggunakan video, ya, yeah, uh, pelajar boleh ulang semula. Jadi it, dengan adanya video itu sebenarnya Ya, rakaman video, uh, ia telah uh, secara langsung, ya, bagi saya secara langsung telah meraihkan kemampuan pelajar yang pelbagai yang mungkin agak lambat sikit menangkap ketika berlakunya proses uh, pengajaran dan pembelajaran secara kuliah segera. Ya, uh, baik. Uh, bagi saya juga antara perkara yang penting juga kita kena mengajar pelajar kemahiran dan etika uh, bekerja di persekitaran maya ni lah ya uh, tapi saya rasa kita dah uh, lebih setahun ya uh, terlibat dengan pandemik ni dan saya rasa secara tak langsung pelajar pun dah mula dapat uh, membiasakan diri dengan suasana pembelajaran secara dalam talian ya jadi antaranya mula-mula kita dulu bising ada yang terbuka mic dan sebagainya ya ada yang mungkin buka video dan gambar agak kurang uh, sesuai dan macam-macam lagi lah Begitu juga dari, itu dari segi etika. Dari segi kemahiran, uh, biasanya kita akan minta pelajar kongsikan fail, kongsikan persembahan video dan sebagainya. Tapi dikongsikan dengan cara yang tak betul menyebabkan kita sebagai pesyarah tak boleh nak buka. Jadi perkara-perkara kemahiran supam itu bagi saya perlu diajarkan kepada pelajar uh, supaya uh, perjalanan ya, uh, pembelajaran dan pengajaran secara dalam talian ini lebih uh, berkesan. Kalau tidak nanti kang bila kita nak buka susah kena minta balik mengambil masa dan sebagainya ya. Dan yang penting juga bagi saya adalah membentuk uh, suasana persekitaran pembelajaran yang aktif. Ya. Uh, uh, maksud dia sekiranya kalau kita dalam kelas biasanya lah mungkin mungkin tak semua pencerah lah ya bagi saya mungkin sebahagian wallah alam saya tak pasti tapi sekiranya ada lah ya ada pencerah dia masuk dia bercakap seronok dia bercakap bercerah dan sebagainya kemudian dia keluar begitu saja. Kan? Soalan di akhir ada soalan. Ha, pelajar dah mengantuk nak soal apa kan ya. Eh? Ha, jadi uh, sekiranya perkara yang sama berlaku secara dalam talian. Kita andaikan perkara yang sama mengajar menggunakan Google Meet ataupun uh, Microsoft Team. Ha. Jadi pelajar bosan. Ya. Yeah? Ha, bila bosan uh, jadi uh, mungkin kita punya objektif tidak tercapai. Ya. Yeah? Pelajar pun tak ambil perhatian. Jadi bagi saya, apa yang saya biasa uh, laksanakan adalah saya akan cuba banyak aktiviti. ya. Yeah? Uh, dan aktiviti yang biasa saya banyakkan tu saya akan banyakkan uh, menggunakan banyak aplikasi. Lebih daripada satu. Contoh ya. Uh, mungkin uh, saya biasanya di samping uh, spektrum. ya, yeah, Saya akan uh, spektrum bagi saya merupakan asas lah. Sebab uh, kita punya uh, KPI. Uh, untuk uh, apa blended uh, learning itu ya pembelajaran teradun itu uh, diukur uh, menggunakan uh, spektrum uh, kalau kita gunakan uh, uh, Google Meet, Microsoft Teams, Zoom, Webex dan lain-lain lagi ya 
itu tidak dapat dikira dengan mudah ya uh, ataupun memang tak boleh dikira dan tak dikira pun dalam sistem UST Melaya ya uh, untuk KPI Uh, blended. Tapi sebenarnya kita dah, dah tak blended dah sekarang ya. <laughs> blended tu maksud dia adalah pembelajaran secara uh, biasa bersemuka dalam kelas dicampur dengan uh, e-pembelajaran uh, secara tidak bersemuka ya. Uh, jadi uh, ataupun bersemuka tapi dalam talian ya. Uh, jadi uh, sekarang ni memang sepenuhnya buka patutnya kita kena tukar sistem layar punya blended tu kan. Dia tak blended dah. Dia adalah uh, jarak jauh sepenuhnya ya ataupun e-pembelajaran sepenuhnya. Ah, tak apalah. Baik, jadi uh, 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 saya akan menjadikan spektrum sebagai asas. ya. Yeah. Spektrum sebagai asas. Uh, biasanya dalam spektrum, perkara-perkara uh, penting yang saya gunakan adalah uh, seperti ini. ya. Yeah. Uh, uh, ini muka depan lah ya. Yeah. Uh, ini ini memang saya gunakan sungguh bagi saya sangat penting iaitulah uh, kehadiran untuk pelajar mendaftar kehadiran masing-masing. ya. Yeah. Uh, kemudian uh, saya akan letak di atas sekali uh, tajuk kursus sebab tajuk kursus ni kadang-kadang dia ada dekat tab kan dekat tab uh, uh, pelayar uh, laman sewang tu jadi kadang-kadang pendek kan tak nampak jadi saya akan besarkan tulis kat bawah ni kemudian saya juga akan uh, sertakan di setiap kursus yang saya ajar sinopsis ataupun pengenalan kursus Kemudian juga hasil pembelajaran ni lah bagi saya yang paling penting sebab apa? Sebab uh, pelajar bila mana dia log in Ya, masuk ke dalam laman uh, kursus yang kita ajar, dia akan nampak. Ya, okey. Jadi dah selesai belum uh, apa objektif ini ataupun uh, hasil ini dah dapat di dah belum. Ini dah dapat belum. Ini dapat belum. Begitu juga pensyarah sendiri sebenarnya dia mudah. Takut tersilap. Kadang-kadang dia mengajar seronok-seronok uh, dia lupa. Eh ini dia belum disentuh lagi. Ya, uh, objektif ni belum dinilai lagi. Macam mana aku nak nilai? Uh, Sepatut ini dia selesai awal kan? saya wah ketika mereka merancang eh merancang pengajaran pembelajaran eh ha, tapi mungkin kadang-kadang ialah uh, mungkin uh, terlupa nak buat ke yang dirancang dan sebagainya bila mana kita sentiasa bila masuk ke laman uh, kursus kita kita nampak perkara ini bagi saya ia mudah untuk kita tak terlepas pandang ya eh. baik jadi antara lain yang saya gunakan dalam spektrum adalah pengumuman uh, ataupun forum uh, forum lah ha, cuma saya agak uh, Sampai sekarang lah bagi saya agak kurang berjaya sampai kepada objektif ya forum itu dibuat dalam sistem uh, Moodle ataupun LMS ataupun Spectrum uh, UM ini sebab uh, saya terpaksa uh, memaksa pelajar untuk uh, seakan simulasi sahaja apa yang sebenarnya di belakang falsafah falsafah di belakang ya forum antaranya forum lah ya sebab dalam uh, sistem Moodle ini kalau tuan-tuan dan perempuan baca ya apa dia punya falsafah di belakang Uh, sistem model itu dia menggunakan uh, falsafah uh, social constructivism ya yeah? ha, jadi tak berlaku falsafah tu maksud tak dapat dicapai pun bila mana pelajar tidak bekerjasama berbincang dan sebagainya itu masalah lah kan ya yeah? ha, jadi uh, 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 saya cuba juga kadang paksa kamu kena sebab pelajar saya tak pasti apa sebab mungkin perlu dikaji ya uh, tapi uh, telahan saya setakat ini adalah Uh, pelajar terlalu terlalu banyak perkara yang dia kena buat ya yeah? uh, pelajar berapa jam kredit uh, lap, uh, apa, uh, 18 jam kredit 21 jam kredit dan sebagainya uh, menyebabkan uh, dia sendiri pun tak sempat jadi apa yang dia buat dia akan sekadar melepaskan betuk di tangga ya yeah? uh, dia tulis letak baca bahkan <laughs> apa yang dimasukkan dalam forum itu uh, sebahagian pelajar lah bila saya tanya dia pun tak boleh nak jawab Uh, nampaknya dia hanya salin dan tampalkan sahaja teks ataupun gambar dalam uh, forum yang kita sediakan. Uh, jadi uh, itu masalah lah ya. Uh, jadi bagi saya tidak berjaya. Kalau betul-betul tapi sebagainya berjaya juga tapi tak banyak lah bagi saya keberjayaannya. Kalau saya sendiri mungkin 30% ke bawah lah. Ya. Yeah? Uh, tapi telahan saya sebabnya adalah ada disebabkan oleh pelajar terlalu banyak kursus yang dia kena uh, dia daftar. Uh, kemudian dia terlalu banyak benda juga benda yang sama dia kena buat untuk kursus-kursus yang lain mungkin oleh sebab itu menyebabkan mereka susah nak uh, memberikan uh, apa uh, apa uh, menjalankanlah forum tu dengan baik. Baik. Kemudian uh, ini e, e kehadiran attendant ya yeah, yang kita gunakan benda ni. Kemudian uh, ini assignment ya. Yeah. Kemudian uh, perkara penting juga yang saya gunakan dalam spektrum adalah pemilihan kumpulan. Ini memang saya gunakan secara automatik lah pelajar tekan sendiri kumpulan dia ada minat. Jadi kat situ bagi saya lebih baik uh, sebab uh, mereka boleh pilih kumpulan bersama sahabat-sahabat uh, mereka yang mereka uh, kehendaki. Baik. 
Uh, di samping itu, uh, saya akan gunakan uh, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Teams lah. Uh, saya bersama juga lah dengan uh, uh, Profesor Madia Dr. Dorothy tadi. Uh, saya suka Microsoft Teams. Sebab saya rasa Microsoft Teams ni, uh, kalau saya nak bandingkan dengan Google Meet, Google Meet dia hanya satu uh, perantara atau pelantar yang boleh kita gunakan untuk berhubung dengan uh, pelajar kita secara sidang uh, video, kan? Uh, kemudian ada pun perbincangan yang ditulis, teks, ya? uh, dia tak simpan dengan baik walaupun boleh dia disimpan ya? tapi tak simpan dengan baik seperti mana Microsoft Teams. Bagi saya Microsoft Teams adalah uh, pusat sehenti lah ya, one stop center yang uh, boleh uh, mengimbangi ya, fungsi spektrum yang merupakan uh, asas lah yang perlu kita gunakan di Universiti Melayu. Eh? Jadi uh, kalau uh, Microsoft Teams pula Uh, saya akan susun seperti ini ya. Yeah. Uh, jadi uh, ini kuliah uh, katakan 6 tarikh dia bila kemudian saya dalam kuliah ini pelajar tak boleh tulis kecuali di bahagian ini sahaja ya. Yeah. Uh, kalau tidak nanti kita berterabur uh, sebab ketika saya mula menggunakan Microsoft Teams ini uh, jadi rasa uh, uh, berterabur ya eh. susah uh, jadi tu masalah jadi eh kena laju sikit ni ya. baik uh, Kemudian uh, beginilah, uh, saya laju sikit lah ini yang saya gunakan lah ya eh. uh, uh, Untuk Microsoft uh, Team dan dalam tu adalah kuliah-kuliah yang uh, saya buat ya yeah. Baik, jadi uh, kemudian saya juga akan soal pelajar Dalam Microsoft Team kita boleh nampak kan nama pelajar uh, Mungkin kadang-kadang saya tak kenal sebab ada satu kohort pelajar memang tak pernah jumpa langsung secara bersemuka Saya kenal dalam talian sahaja <coughs> Jadi um, tak tak kenal ya. Jadi uh, saya sebut nama sajalah. Kan? Uh, tak kenal betul maksud dia tak pernah jumpa. Gambar mungkin adalah ya. Yeah? Uh, jadi uh, itu cara yang saya buat sebab pelajar ini kalau tak buat macam tu, kadang-kadang mereka tidur, mereka buat benda lain dan sebagainya. Saya nak minta mereka buka video setiasa pun susah juga ya. Eh? Sebab kadang masalah uh, capaian kepada internet agak lemah menyebabkan kalau buka video jadi mereka uh, tak boleh nak uh, berjalan kuliah tu dengan baik. Baik. Um, saya teruskan lagi lah. Jadi uh, banyak ke aplikasi kemudian menggalakkan untuk pelajar berhujah, berbincang dan sebagainya. Jadi uh, yang penting di sini adalah kita dalam uh, pengajaran secara dalam talian ini terutamanya untuk yang uh, pertemuan segera. Uh, uh, bagi saya perlu membentuk suasana persekitaran pelajar yang aktif. Kita suruh pelajar cari. ya. Yeah? Uh, kita uh, 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 Antara aplikasi yang lain yang biasa saya gunakan adalah Socrative, ya, yeah? Padlet, uh, Neop Neopod pun uh, menarik juga ya, yeah? sebab kita boleh kawal dan sebagainya lah. Baik, itu berkaitan dengan perbezaan individu. Kita juga kena ambil kira berkaitan dengan tabiat dan keperluan kursus yang kita ajar. Uh, secara umumnya uh, kursus ni dia ada mungkin banyak pengetahuan ya. Ada yang uh, kemahiran lebih banyak ya. Uh, nilai ni biasa dia akan masuk lah mana-mana ya. Ini mungkin kita boleh kembali kepada domain-domain yang kita tahulah dalam bidang pendidikan dari segi kognitif, dari segi efektif dan juga psikomotor. Tapi bagi saya Uh, terutamanya kami uh, di program pendidikan Islam yang menawarkan uh, kursus-kursus kepada pelajar yang uh, ada setengah kursus tu memang sepenuhnya secara amali ya yeah? uh, jadi uh, untuk memilih kaedah berkesan secara dalam talian agak mencabar terutamanya yang melibatkan uh, kemahiran jadi contoh ya yeah, dari sini keperluan program ikhtisas pendidikan Islam kita ada dari aspek kandungan dan dari aspek kemahiran pedagogi kan ya yeah? uh, jadi uh, saya nak laju sikit ni Uh, dalam bidang kandungan asas uh, mungkin dalam bidang asas pendidikan lah pasal faham pendidikan, soji pendidikan tu biasalah jadi apa yang perlu pelajar dapat dalam objektif kita pelajar perlu katakan boleh menganalisis, boleh uh, menyenaraikan, boleh mengenal pasti dan sebagainya ya. Uh, jadi untuk, begitu juga tentang ilmu-ilmu Islam yang kami ajar akidah, fiqah, sirah rata-rata uh, dia lebih melibatkan uh, kognitif ataupun teori ya. Yeah. Bahasa Arab juga begitu nahu, soraf dan Uh, lain-lain lagi lah ya. Uh, itu bagi saya tidak ada masalah sangat ya. Uh, tapi yang bermasalah ini adalah dari yang uh, psikomotor ya. Eh? Yang psikomotor ni. Yang ada motor ni ya. Uh, yang maknanya badan perlu bergerak. Kemahiran ya. Eh? Uh, jadi bidang kemahiran ni lah menyebab uh, agak sedikit sukar kadang-kadang. Uh, antara ni rezeki tilawah Al-Quran, hafazan Al-Quran, taranum Al-Quran ya. Uh, jadi uh, di situ uh, guru uh, perlu mengajar untuk uh, dan pelajar perlu dapat pengajaran guru dengan baik contoh macam taranum dia kena dengar nampak uh, apa bagaimanakah uh, guru ataupun pencerah uh, melaksanakan 
uh, taranum tertentu dan sebagainya. Kemudian guru juga perlu dengar pelajar tapi itu sebenarnya uh, secara umumnya boleh dibuat lah. Yeah. Cuma aktiviti-aktiviti itu sebab dia perlu kepada uh, pelaksanaan yeah, sesuatu kemahiran. Tapi uh, yang saya nampak antara yang paling uh, sukar adalah latihan mengajar yeah. yang ini. Ya. Yeah. Ha, latihan mengajar ni. Kami uh, di uh, bidang pendidikan, kita ada secara umumnya pengajaran mikro ya, dan juga latihan mengajar yang ada kaitan dengan pedagogi. Jadi uh, pengajaran mikro memang teori sedikit dan kemudian seluruhnya pelajar laksanakan uh, pengajaran. Jadi uh, itu pun agak sedikit mencabar juga ya, terutamanya uh, kita uh, 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 dalam uh, pengajaran pada zaman, zaman pandemik ini ya, uh, perlu memerlukan kemahiran-kemahiran tertentu lah. Uh, dan sebenarnya uh, kami di program pendidikan Islam telah sediakan pelajar-pelajar kami untuk bersedia sebab tengok ya antara pengalaman kami uh, kursus latihan mengajar dahulu uh, pelajar pada tahun uh, 2020 PKP 1 tu memang berlaku kejutan budaya ya dia dah, dah sebulan dah uh, uh, melaksanakan latihan mengajar di sekolah dan kami pun sebagai pencerah dah pergi ke sekolah-sekolah untuk uh, mencerap ya mereka punya pengajaran dan melihat prestasi mereka yang eh, memberikan maklum balas terhadap prestasi dan sebagainya tiba-tiba bulan tiga berlaku PKP ya jadi uh, kami tak boleh uh, nak pergi sekolah pelajar pun tak boleh nak pergi sekolah jadi macam mana jadi kami berfikir memang uh, pelajar perlu ber, ber, apa bergerosi pada pada waktu yang sepatutnya jadi kami teruskan juga secara PDPR lah zaman tu tak keluar lagi istilah PDPR tapi kami dah minta pelajar buat tak kira lah secara uh, segera ke uh, maksud saya uh, secara segera yang video sidang video ke ataupun menggunakan uh, kaedah-kaedah lain uh, seperti telegram, whatsapp dan uh, sebagainya ya. Uh, baik jadi uh, itu masalah kami pengalaman kami ketika tahun 2020 cuma untuk tahun 2021 kami dah mula uh, ada pengalaman yang lepas jadi kami cuba selesaikan yang ini saya nak, uh, nak uh, tunjukkan sikit Uh, jadi satu, kami telah mem, uh, membina satu sistem untuk menguruskan kursus latihan mengajar dengan lebih cekap uh, uh, dan uh, untuk mengatasi segala masalah-masalah lah dalam keadaan tak menentu. Sebab kami pun nak uh, apa, tak tahu ketika itulah ketika awal tahun 2021 uh, uh, ni kan kami tak pasti uh, akan berlaku sekolah pergi sekolah ke ataupun tidak. Jadi kami uh, buat keputusan penyeliaan berlaku secara dalam tarian sepenuhnya. Ya, yeah. kalau pelajar pergi, boleh pergi sekolah dia kena rakam pengajaran dia. Ya, kalau dia tak pergi sekolah, dia kena berikan uh, kepada pesarah rakaman pertemuan dia dengan pelajar, maksud dia pengajaran dia uh, secara video lah menggunakan Google Meet ataupun apa-apa pelanta ataupun aplikasi yang lain ya. Jadi, uh, tapi itu masih berterabur lagi. Jadi kami uh, buat satu sistem, ya, aplikasi yang berasaskan lama sesawang yang kami beri nama sebagai sistem pengurusan latihan mengajar. Nanti saya akan tunjukkan dan uh, sistem ini mengambil kira aspek-aspek penting ya yang uh, perlu ada dalam pelaksanaan uh, LM atau pelatihan mengajar secara biasa dan disesuaikan dengan kaedah dalam talian dan uh, secara jarak jauh. Ya, baik. Jadi sistem ni uh, bagi uh, memudahkan perhubungan di antara semua pihak yang terlibat dalam uh, kursus tu sama ada pelajar, ya, penyelia, guru pembimbing, petakbiran program pendidikan Islam, ya dan juga pentadbiran sekolah. Jadi boleh masuk semua dalam tu, boleh tengok ya. Eh. Uh, memungkinkan ke pelajar untuk menunjuk dan membuktikan kemajuan pembelajaran mereka. Mereka belajar, kalau kita mengajar tapi belajar mengajar kan di sekolah. Jadi mereka boleh tunjukkan aktiviti yang mereka laksanakan di sekolah, adalah cara pembuktian-pembuktiannya. Kemudian mudahkan penyelia untuk memantau perkembangan pembelajaran pelajar dan menilai prestasi pelajar ya. Eh. Uh, jadi uh, kita uh, memudahkan. Jadi uh, apa yang pelajar telah Uh, buktikan contoh kalau dia ada mesyuarat untuk co curriculum ditunjukkan gambar mesyuarat uh, dia buat laporan sedikit jadi pe- sebagai penyelia dia nampak oh pelajar ni telah melaksanakan uh, perkara yang melibatkan co curriculum ataupun dia buat uh, uh, penelitian secara tidak segera uh, dia tunjukkan menggunakan Google Classroom dan sebagainya itu juga uh, pembuktian yang baik ya memudah uh, kemudian memudahkan pelajar menerima maklum balas daripada penyelia dan guru pembimbing Ha, kita dalam sistem tersebut kita juga memudahkan pelajar lah pelajar uh, bukan sekadar dia bertak telefon saja untuk dapat maklum balas ya ha, dalam sistem tu pun uh, uh, ketika uh, uh, penyelia menilai ataupun guru pembimbing menilai uh, prestasi pelajar tu dia akan boleh tulis dia punya ulasan dan pelajar boleh baca ulasan tu markah pelajar tak tak, tak nampak lah ya? 
Kemudian membolehkan pihak pentadbiran uh, program pendidikan Islam dan sekolah memantau perjalanan LM. Sekolah boleh pantau uh, bagaimana pelajar tu, bagaimana guru bimbing melaksanakan PPI juga boleh memantau uh, uh, kita punya penyelia kan eh. Ha, dia buat kerja ke tidak ya. Ha, jadi uh, ini uh, merupakan uh, ke depan selepas login lah sistem ni. Mungkin kalau sempat uh, saya boleh tunjukkan secara uh, masa ada berapa minit lagi ya. Puan Umur. Kita ada dalam 10 minit macam tu Untuk saya? Ha, boleh oh. ke? Ah, boleh boleh kalau 10 minit ah, Lagi okay. saya, mudah saya nak tunjukkan Baik ya, ah, jadi ini sistem yang telah kami uh, bina Ya, ah, selepas uh, login uh, Kemudian dia ada maklumat pelajar Ini yang pelajar punya maklumat lah Kehadiran dia ke sekolah Ya, ah, kalau dia hadir ke sekolah secara dalam talian Dia buat juga Ya, kat sini dan akan disakat oleh guru pemimbing dia ada pengajaran dia kat sini adalah dia punya uh, rancangan pengajaran harian ya dan juga apa-apa yang melibatkan uh, pengajaran satu sisi pengajaran kemudian gerak kerja dia di sekolah apa yang dia buat ya kemudian borang-borang ini untuk memudahkan pengurusanlah borang-borang yang perlu diselesaikan ya untuk proses tem mengajar kemudian maklumat berkaitan dengan sekolah ya kemudian takwim sekolah jadi memudahkan pesyarah boleh tengok apa sekolah tu punya takwim ya kelas yang dia dapat daripada guru yang mengajar kat sekolah yang ditempatkan untuk dia mengajar tu ya kemudian senarai murid yang diajar ya kemudian uh, mata pelajaran yang uh, dia ajar ya. kemudian jadual waktu kemudian rancangan pengajaran mingguan ini dari uh, apa perancangan lah ya pengajaran kemudian penilaian yang dibuat kepada pelajar ya Kemudian pencapaian murid yang diajar kemudian statistik. Statistik ni adalah untuk memudahkan uh, uh, apa uh, penyelia dan guru bimbing melihat uh, kemajuan pelajar. Cik, saya, saya cuba harap-harapnya sistem saya, uh, saya yang saya buat ni hidup sekarang. Eh. Saya cuba kongsikan. Cuma uh, eh. Oh, dia lambat sikit. Okey. Baik. Uh, jadi, uh, baik, ini merupakan uh, halaman depan lah ya uh, untuk login. Jadi, uh, ini kami namakan sebagai sistem pengurusan atas yang mengajar. Ya. Yeah. Dan uh, bawah tu uh, program Mereka Islam dan sebagainya lah. Kemudian, uh, kita pelajar perlu mendaftar ya eh, di sini. Dia boleh daftar, uh, sama ada, uh, tapi ni kita buka lah untuk pelajar, untuk pemimpin dan sebagainya pada waktu itu takut uh, diganggu oleh siapa. Yeah. Uh, okay, jadi sekarang saya akan masuk menggunakan uh, kata laluan ataupun pengguna uh, admin yang paling besar lah yang boleh lihat semua sekali. Baik, uh, ini seperti mana yang saya tunjukkan tadi, tak apalah yang ruangan pelajar ni dah selesai. Kita tengok ruangan penyelia, uh, kita ada maklumat penyelia. Kita ada maklumat apa yang dia selia dan maklumat penilaian penyelia. Ha, ini agak uh, apa ya uh, apa sulit lah ha, tapi saya tak akan tunjuk dalam tu lah. Kemudian uh, guru pembimbing, guru pembimbing ini kita lantik di sekolah. Dia akan membimbing pelajar-pelajar kami yang kami hantar ke sekolah. Ini maklumat guru pembimbing, uh, maklumat uh, pelajar di bawah bimbingan dia. Kemudian uh, penilaian daripada guru pembimbing. Ini ruangan petakbir sekolah. Petakbir sekolah dia akan masuk. Ini maklumat petakbir sekolah lah. Mungkin guru besar dan sebagainya. Guru penolong kanan. Uh, bukan guru besar, pengetua. Sebab pelajar kami uh, mengajar di sekolah menengah. Eh. Jadi uh, pelajar akan masuk sini. Semua orang akan masuk. Penyelia akan masuk. Pelajar akan masuk. Ya, yeah. uh, Begitu juga guru pemimpin masuk. Petakbir masuk. Kemudian ada juga maklumat sokongan yang lain lah. Yeah. Uh, ini uh, sebagai maklumat sokongan lah. Macam contohnya macam... Uh, Uh, pengumuman eh? uh, Jadi kalau kita, uh, kami nak uh, buat pengumuman uh, Kita akan hantar Jadi uh, pelajar dan uh, semua orang boleh tengok ya? Bergantung pada siapa yang kita nak bagi tengok ya? uh, Pengumuman tu Tapi contoh ya pelajar uh, Ini uh, adalah pelajar-pelajar kami Kalau saya boleh tunjukkan satu Jadi terperinci ya uh, Ha, gambar ada semua. Jadi uh, ha, ini penyelia pelajar tu. Pelajar tu kalau dia masuk dia akan nampak semua penyelia dia. Siapa penyelia dia? Ya. Ha, jadi ini pelajar dan penyelia dia 
Jadi kalau pel- uh, pelajar tu nak telefon uh, penyelia dia, dia boleh tekan sini saja bukan telefon lah untuk berhubung eh. Dia tekan dia akan masuk ke WhatsApp. Kalau dia tekan email dia akan terus uh, buka email lah boleh hantar eh. Ha, jadi uh, ini untuk maklumat pelajar lah dan penyelia juga boleh tengok maklumat pelajar dia sahaja ya. Yeah? Okey itu maklumat pelajar. Kemudian kehadiran. Ha, ini uh, umum. Ha, baik ha, ini maklumat dia. Ha, dia ada boleh uh, hadir. Uh, tiada maklumat cuti sakit, cuti kecemasan. Kalau cuti sakit dengan kecemasan ni dia kena ada surat doktor dan sebagainya pengesahan disahkan oleh guru pembimbing di sekolah ya. Yeah? Uh, jadi uh, sebab kehadiran penting, kita tak, tak, takut pelajar kita tak hadir uh, Dan yang paling penting sekali adalah pengajaran Sebab inilah uh, yang mengajarnya uh, Jadi di sini, kalau saya boleh tunjukkan satu uh, Saya tak pasti pelajar, di sini ada uh, uh, Ini maklumat dia ya, maklumat-maklumat uh, Sama sahaja uh, seperti uh, RPH Ya yeah. uh, Baik, uh, ini sebagai contoh lah uh, Aku suka macam ni Uh, tarikh dia bila minggu ke berapa mata pelajaran apa kemudian tingkatan berapa ya kelas apa ya tajuk pengajaran tu uh, kemudian di sini kita uh, pelajar letakkan ya uh, uh, bahan mata mengajar yang digunakan kemudian uh, rakaman video rakaman video pengajaran nah uh, ni kalau ditekan uh, pe- penyelia boleh tengok rakaman video ni tak pula saya tak tunjukkanlah sebab ini maklumat pelajar yang mungkin agak sedikit sulit. Uh, tapi maknanya guru boleh tengok. Jadi uh, dalam uh, pandemik yang berlaku sekarang, eh, bila mana berlaku uh, PDPR, akhirnya pengajaran akan berlaku menggunakan pelantar-pelantar ataupun aplikasi-aplikasi seperti uh, Google Meet lah kebanyakannya. Begitu juga mungkin yang lain, Zoom pun pernah digunakan oleh pelajar kami. Uh, Microsoft Teams saya rasa macam setakat pelajar di bawah selian saya tak ada yang guna lah. <laughs> yeah. uh, dan yang lain lah. Ha, di samping uh, aplikasi yang berasaskan teks seperti uh, WhatsApp ataupun Telegram uh, dan juga mungkin uh, sistem yang lain seperti Google Classroom lah. Ya, ha, jadi kat sini uh, pelajar maknanya penyelia dengan sistem ini dia mudah untuk dapatkan rakaman ini. Dia, dia boleh buka rakaman ni. Ya, ha, kemudian uh, Ha, kalau saya jalankan uh, maknanya uh, penyelia boleh menyelia uh, bagaimanakah uh, pelajar tu melaksanakan pengajaran dia akan tengok RPH dia tengok dia punya uh, CL, uh, apa, uh, hasil pembelajaran uh, tercapai atau tidak sebagai contohlah adakah dia mengajar menggunakan kaedah yang betul adakah dia menilai pelajar dia dengan cara yang betul adakah objektif lain cara nilai lain ya eh? ha, jadi uh, uh, itu dia boleh uh, pel- uh, penyelia boleh jadi oleh sebab itu Penyelia, bila mana dia tengok, dia akan boleh bagi ulasan. Alhamdulillah kat sini tak ada, tak ada ulasan lah. Ya. Yeah? Ha, ini hanya admin nampak lah. Pelajar dia tak nampak bawah ni, atas ni nampak lah. Pen, uh, ulasan penyelia akan keluar kat sini sebenarnya. Tapi tak adalah untuk yang ini. Ya. Yeah? Ha, kemudian ulasan pembimbing, guru pembimbing ada di bawah ni. Jadi dari segi pelajar, ya, yeah, uh, dia akan terima ya, yeah, uh, ulasan-ulasan tu untuk dia uh, baik uh, tambah baik ya, yeah, pengajaran-pengajaran dia yang akan datang ya. Yeah. Jadi uh, ini yang paling penting sekali ya. Yeah. Baik, kita tengok yang lain lagi sikit. Uh, kemudian gerak kerja. Uh, di sini uh, pelajar boleh tunjukkan gerak kerja kat kerja yang dia buat di sekolah. Jadi kat sini sebagai bukti lah uh, dia aktif dan dia melaksanakan apa yang sepatutnya dia buat. Uh, contoh apa dia buat ni. Uh, ini latihan mengajar, dia pergi sekolah dan sebagainya. ya. Uh, jadi uh, di sini uh, pesara ataupun penyelia dia nampak oh pelajar ni buat kerja. Ya, yeah, uh, ada bukti dia buat kerja. Jadi macam port, uh, kita boleh kata portfolio lah. Ya, yeah. uh, ada perkara uh, yang sepatutnya dibuat dia buat. Ya, yeah. kemudian uh, apa lagi saya nak tunjuk uh, mungkin uh, statistik ni lah. Uh, ya, yeah. uh. uh, jadi statistik ni kita boleh nampak setiap apa yang dia buat tu nampak sini. Jadi dia boleh pantau uh, pelajar tu. Eh, dia hanya letak RPH baru sikit. Contohnya dia, dia tengok kat sini. Kehadiran rupanya dia banyak tak hadir. Ha, contohnya kan ya. Eh? Jadi dia boleh nampak di situ dan dia boleh dipantau dengan lebih mudah. Sekolah boleh tengok. Pihak pentadbiran di program berikan selang boleh tengok. Ya, uh, Penyelia pasti boleh tengok. Guru pembimbing boleh tengok dengan mudah. Pentadbiran sekolah juga boleh boleh tengok ya. Ha, jadi uh, mungkin bagi kami, Alhamdulillah uh, aplikasi yang dibangunkan ini uh, berjaya lah secara uh, umumnya ya. Uh, untuk memastikan pelajar kami 
pesyarah-pesyarah yang menyelia pelajar dapat menyelia dengan lebih mudah nak masuk ke markah pun senang dulu nak hantar markah punya dah lihat <laughs> ya yeah, uh, Uh, tapi dengan sistem yang sekarang ni uh, dia mudah kan tak perlu nak tulis dekat borang lah itulah itu yang menyebabkan dia lihat tu kadang-kadang eh ha, jadi bila macam ni nampak uh, apa uh, pengajaran pengajar terus ditulis ulasan terus diberikan markah kalau boleh saya tunjukkan contoh uh, borang pemarkahan yang uh, macam ni eh uh, ok Ha, jadi ini uh, markah-markah yang uh, yang adalah ya ha, jadi uh, penyelia boleh tentukan uh, skala 10 lah ya eh, setiap uh, aspek yang di, disebutkan ya eh, untuk menilai uh, pelajar. Baik uh, jadi kesimpulannya apa yang boleh uh, saya sebut adalah pandemik ini sebenarnya mengajar kita lah ya eh, untuk uh, lebih Uh, kreatif dan proaktif lah ya eh. uh, untuk menyelesaikan masalah-masalah yang berkaitan dengan pengajaran dan pembelajaran uh, dan uh, saya kira uh, kedua-dua lah pihak lah pelajar dan juga uh, pensyarah ya yeah, uh, perlu uh, uh, berusaha lah ya yeah, untuk memahirkan diri dalam uh, budaya kerja ya yeah, dalam secara maya ini untuk memastikan ya yeah, uh, proses ya uh, pengajaran pembelajaran itu dapat berlaku dengan baik sehingga segala uh, hasil pembelajaran yang sepatutnya dicapai kita boleh capai dengan baik. Bagi saya uh, itu saja yang saya boleh sampaikan. Uh, terima kasih mohon maaf atas kelemahan. Uh, itu saja kembali kepada uh, puan uh, Umu eh. Alright, um, do we have any question for the all the speakers? You can just unmute your mic and deliver your question. Alright, um, if there is no question, um, can we um, ask all of you to turn on your camera so we can actually take picture? Is that possible? Uh, Anis, are you ready? All right, um, can you all hold on for a while? Um, we're just waiting for a few more. Is this all the one that um, turning on their camera? Anyone else? Uh, Anis ada kat sini ke? Sekejap ya. Okay. Can can I also respond to Dr Ahmad punya persoalan bila sure, Dr Dorothy ah uh, bila Dr Ahmad kata tak berapa berjaya untuk menggerakkan pelajar-pelajar um, untuk respon dalam forum kan uh, so uh, saya nak tanya Dr Ahmad ada adakah markah diberikan untuk uh, perbincangan dalam forum? Uh. Memang setakat ni saya tak ada markah tertentu lah. Jadi itu mungkin, mungkin itu sebabnya lah juga. Ha? Boleh, <laughs> boleh jadilah, boleh jadi. <laughs> jadi macam saya, saya maklumkan kepada pelajar dari awal semester lah ada penglibatan dalam forum yang yang ada rubrik untuk um, you know um, macam mana saya beri markah. So mereka kena aktif 
dalam respon dan juga jawapan yang diberikan mesti menunjukkan higher level thinking lah. Tapi marka yang sangat sikit lah. Tapi untuk mereka yang nak score, ah mungkin ini penting juga lah. So that dapat menggalakkan mereka. Hmm. Saya boleh cuba nanti lah. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Terima kasih, Doktor. Saya masuk masalah saya adalah pada CLO. Okay. Lah. Saya takut nak thank masuk you. CLO mana. <laughs> Alright, okay. Thank you, Doktor. Okay, uh, can we continue for the photography session? Yes, yes, yes. And yes. yeah, okay. Ready? Um, smile, one, two. Three. Okay, one more time. One, two. Wait. Last one. One, two. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Uh, back to Kak Umu. Puan Umu. All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, so we have a feedback form available for you to fill up. Uh, we appreciate your feedback so that we can improve on our future training program. So with that, thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Okay. Terima kasih. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Thank you for sharing Dr. Terima Nash and Shukran Dr. Ustaz uh, Muhammad. Yeah, welcome. Most welcome.